Welcome back to the Fast Money Halftime Report. Tapping the tape in today's session, eBay shares up nearly 2%. City upgrading the stock to a buy from a hold citing valuation. City says today is a great entry point. They've got a price target that implies a 30% upside from where the stock closed in yesterday's session. Dr. J, have you used eBay at all lately to uh, bid on anything, buy any merchandise? Are you a fan of the stock? I'm a fan of the stock, but I have not bid on the site lately. Uh, that's not really here nor there as far as, as an investment thesis. I just haven't used them. Uh, but I, I did, as I told you last night on the show, I was in the, uh, the the triple short NASDAQ ETF, and I did sell that just over 61 this morning. So I'm a believer that many of these NASDAQ stocks overcome some of the NASDAQ pull from the technology side because the triple shorts, I believe, have topped out. We'll see how that plays out. I went short them this morning. I plan on eBay for the first time last night. I bought, a, I, I bought a no Pete Nigerian rookie card when he had hair. <laughs> did you? Did you bid on it? Plus a lot of scratch, but I got it. The only one. Wow, and we will reveal it on Fast Money. Sure, why point, not? I'm sure. All right, let's move on to our call of the day here. Analyst Tony Sakanagi of Sanford Bernstein wrote an open letter this morning to Apple's board stating that it is time the company return its cash to shareholder. Um, Tony joins us now on the Fast Line. Tony, it's great to have you with us. Um, certainly, Apple has been known for having a lot of cash for quite some time. So what caused you to write this letter today? Tony? All right. Um, we're having a problem here with Tony's uh, line. So the letter, the letter really those, speaks for itself. Some of those freaking well, iPhones it, it that does, I have. It actually does speak for itself because he's calling for the uh, company to uh, initiate a dividend. Right. Uh, also, per perhaps a share buyback plan at the same time, and still the company would have plenty of cash left over. I mean, his concern basically is here that it's getting a 0.76% return yeah. on its cash, and that is pretty lousy. That's a, that's a common thought across the board. Every Everybody who invests in tech agrees right. with his premise right there. Sorry, there sorry got Grasso, I got a break in. We got some breaking news. I want to go to David Faber. David. Uh, thanks, Melissa. Yeah, I wanted to bring our viewers up to date on a fight that's been going on at Barnes & Noble for quite some time. This morning, it appeared that an agreement had been reached between Ron Burkle, of course, the uh, the uh, shareholder of 19 percent of Barnes & Noble, and the Riggio family and Barnes & Noble itself, of course, the board of directors there. But uh, it didn't work out, in fact. A plan had been underway to give Burkle three board seats. Two of them would have been independent. One would have been a UKIPA member, essentially his investment firm. Uh, didn't happen. It broke down over the last few hours. Hard to exactly know why, although I'm hearing it was some minor issues, but ultimately led, and these are both explosive personalities, Len Riggio, the company's chairman, Mr. Burkle as well, uh, it led to a lack of trust. And when you get a lack of trust in situations like that, ultimately it led to the deal breaking down. Therefore, Mr. Burkle will continue his proxy fight, trying to seek boards, uh, board seats. And as well, we'll soon be hearing from the Delaware Chancery court any moment now about a lawsuit he filed to get Barnes & Noble to throw out its poison pill. Highly unlikely that uh, Chancellor Leo Strine is going to come out in favor of Burkle, but we'll now see that. He'd actually stuck that lawsuit in his desk because he figured the two sides had reached a settlement. Barnes & Noble shares, by the way, Melissa, had been up over 4% earlier on expectations the settlement would be made public. It is not going to happen. The stock has retreated a bit. Back to you. All right. Thank you very much, David Faber, for that update. Uh, we want to bring in um, somebody who's involved with the Barnes & Noble position, and that would be Whitney Tilson of T2 Partners. He joins us uh, right now. Whitney, um, it is perhaps our luck, our fortune to have you on when we have this news here. I understand you're short Barnes & Noble? Yes, we are. Um, how much longer are you going to be in this position? What do you think is going to be the outcome? Um, we've been short it for a while very profitably. Uh, the stock's been following the collapse in the company's profits over the past couple of years, and we actually shorted quite a bit more uh, when the stock popped 25 percent or so recently on the announcement that they were going to try and auction off the company. We view it as a desperation move. Uh, we don't. We think the business is in permanent decline. We can't see anything that can reverse it, and we would. Uh, the company may well get bought, but uh, we doubted a premium to today's prices, and uh, we don't see. I mean, even in this loose financing environment, we're struggling to see who's going to finance a business where cash flows are in free fall like this. Um, in terms of the, the, I mean, you said it could very well be that the company gets bought, but do you think the most likely outcome is that it gets taken private so the stock just basically goes down? Yeah. 
it, I think the board may, might get some bids, but they're going to be bids below the current share price and trying to sell a, a going private transaction, uh, you know, below below a share price uh, that's that's sort of inflated here on expectations of some bigger bid. Uh, that puts the board in a tough position. But I think in either case, there's more downside than upside, so that's why we're short it. Okay, let's move on because there are plenty of other stocks, particularly in today's uh, session, to talk about. Certainly, uh, Microsoft is one of them. Whitney, yesterday you were on Fast Money helping to digest all the tech news after hours. You said Microsoft was crazy cheap. Stock has declined more. It is one of these stocks also that has a lot of cash on hand. It doesn't seem to be getting the investor appreciation necessarily for that. Um, what right. do you think is a catalyst for Microsoft at this point? Um, well, the catalyst is happening right in front of our eyes. They just reported earnings two weeks ago, and revenues were up 22 percent year over year, and earnings per share were up 50 percent year over year. It's really quite extraordinary. Um, all three profit drivers of Microsoft's business are firing on all cylinders right now. And uh, so we think analysts projecting 13 percent earnings per share growth over the next 12 months are massively low. It could well be double that. And uh, if we're right, the stock's trading at about eight times next 12 months earnings net of uh, net of the cash. And um, as one of your uh, uh, commentators uh, just a few minutes ago was saying, you know, Cisco here is trading at 16 times earnings with 18 percent growth rate. And I'm looking at Microsoft with north of 20 uh, percent growth rate uh, trading at eight times earnings. So I like Microsoft. Cisco may well be cheap, but I like Microsoft a lot better here. Um, just quickly, Whitney, are you nibbling around the edges or are you taking a look at Hewlett Packard? Now it's trading around the same sorts of multiples that Microsoft is. Yeah, um, we looked hard at it uh, when the news came out, and we look hard at any stock where we think there might be distressed or irrational selling. Uh, that's what value investors do, I suppose. Um, and uh, we like the PC upgrade cycle here. We're playing it via Microsoft. Right. We own some Intel. We haven't yet started biting it at Hewlett Packard, but it's definitely on our, on our very close watch list. Okay. Whitney Tilson, thanks a lot. Always nice to speak with you.